Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, Arut Shiva, Israel's national news, is reporting an inter interesting article about the Iranian nuclear crisis as Rouhani will resume nuclear work if the West is not committed to a deal. And it's kind of interesting of the very uh, words that are being said here, which only authenticates the fact that, yes, they have been working on nuclear, a nuclear program in order to develop nuclear weapons in the past, if they're beginning to admit it even now. Uh, anyway, Iran's President Hussan, uh, Hussan Rouhani on Tuesday warned major powers that his country would resume its halted nuclear work if they went back on a proposed uh, final deal. That's what he said here. If we reach a deal, both sides should be committed to it, Rouhani said uh, on, in, in Tehran, according to the Reuters news agency. Rouhani's co uh, comments came shortly after a warning to Iran was issued from President Barack Obama, who said earlier that he is still willing to walk um, away from a president, uh, excuse me, from a potential nuclear accord with Iran if Tehran doesn't agree to a verifiable inspections process. Uh, that satisfies the six world powers involved in the negotiations. Um, well, the other day they were reporting that they were going to uh, do away with this altogether, but uh, I guess uh, uh, President Barack Obama has been under a little bit more pressure from uh, his other neighboring partners in making this deal with Iran. Uh, but it goes on to say there, there has been a lot of talk on the other side by the Iranian negotiators about whether in fact they can abide by some of the terms that came up in uh, Lusanne. Obama said, referring to the framework deal reached on April the 2nd, that agreement, he said, if implemented and, um, and excuse me, and uh, codified properly would achieve my goal, which is Iran not attaining a nuclear weapon. Now, we also reported here on Israeli News Live a little while back that Iran has already got nuclear weapons. In fact, it's been reported by one of their own scientists who defected, went to the United States, that they actually have three atomic bombs. Further news, and this is the news that we actually reported on um, Li our live stream version of Israeli News Live. That's uh, if you go to Stephen Denoon, D E N O O N, you can also register to watch our live stream, Israeli News Live on live stream that airs at 10 p.m. Eastern, Sunday through Thursday. Um, that is, as of right now, it's airing at 10 p.m. Eastern. That will change to an a.m. time once we're back in, uh, in Europe and, is, and in Israel because of the time difference there. But anyway, this was the article that we brought up in there last night. Uh, it is an article, again, on IsraelNationalNews.com by Gulio Miotti. Gulio has interviewed with us here on Israeli News Live before. A uh, very interesting uh, man from Italy who stands for the Jewish people. The article is entitled, The Vatican Wants the Temple Mount Taken from the Jews. Well, obviously it's already taken from the Jews anyway, but I, I strongly appreciate uh, Gulio's stand for the Jewish people. Let me just read to you part of the article that he wrote here. He said, in 2000, speaking in a mosque in Palest uh, Palestinian-held Ramallah, Yasser Arafat declared, no one will secede in removing us from our land, including Jerusalem. A, and, and the Palestinian flag will fly from the Temple Mount and from the churches in Jerusalem. It shows you quite clearly, and this is where Gulio is going with this article here, that there is a very strong alliance between Rome and, of course, the Palestinian Authority, the PLO. Um, again, we know that the Palestinians, they need to know Yeshua for sure, not just a Vatican version of it, but they need to know Yeshua as their own Messiah. That is the only hope that they have whatsoever, and I strongly encourage that. But let me just state this here. We have also stated, and perhaps Gulio, reading some of our own work or listening to some of our own news broadcasts, is starting to see this picture himself, and that is Daniel's prophecy of chapter 11 clearly identifies that the prince that shall come comes up strong with a small people, which are the Palestinians. And of course, the Palestinians are being duped into believing the Vatican is really for you when they are not. They're only using you for a pawn because according to Ezekiel's prophecy in chapter 35, they're planning on taking anything you gain as well as anything Israel has and taking it for themselves. 
Um, let me go on with this article, though, by Guglielmo. It says Arafat could say that that because he had won the Vatican's support for his terroristic strategy. On the June 26, 2015, the Vatican signed its first treaty with the state of Palestine. Uh, that is in quotations. Guglielmo pr brought this out. Uh, it is the logical conclusion of a long path. When the pontiff John Paul II ascended to the Temple Mount in 2000, Judaism's most holy site, he wasn't welcomed by Israeli officials, but by representatives of the Palestinian Authority. And the holy complex was uh, bedecked in Arab flags. It was the Pope's implicit recognition of Islamic uh, uh, hegemony. It was taken to mean that Islam and Christianity, Christianity supersede Judaism and have the right to inherit its holy places. It's exactly right, because what have they done? Not only have they taken the Temple Mount back from the Jews back in 1967 when Israel had taken the Temple Mount, but they've also taken Mount Zion as well now. With no referendum whatsoever in Israel, they have taken Mount Zion, and they have drank on God's holy mountain, and they have continually are drinking their wine on the mountain. And that is also a prophecy clearly in Obadiah. And clearly in Obadiah, as the prophecy states, that they would actually be only men partaking. It is in the plural, uh, um, it is in the masculine plural in Hebrew, at the very first time they partake of the communion. And according to Rome reports, they actually said in their own report there that it was only Pope Francis, his delegation, and the, uh, the priests that were in Israel that did partake in the communion there. We brought this out in, in, on the New Institute of Biblical Research and Teachings there. But also, I might add that it said they will continually drink. And that happens to be in a gender-inclusive plural as well, showing that both men and women uh, were partaking in this communion service there. It is biblical prophecies being fulfilled. This is truly breaking news in the hour and the day that we are living in. Now let me continue on with the article that Guglielmo wrote here on Israel National News. Since then, the Holy See is taking a stance as the ally of the heads of the Palestinian Authority in the place most holy to the Jewish people, become almost a uh, a fate uh, accompli. The Catholic uh, delegitimization of Israel passes through the war on Jerusalem and the war of Jerusalem passes through the Temple Mount, the site where the Jewish people worship for hundreds of years and the focal point of every practicing Jew's prayer is under assault from the Vatican. Thank God for Guglielmo Miotti that he makes the stand with the Jewish people in the way that he does. I, I, I thank God for him. He's an author, by the way. Look up his books. He writes about what the Vatican has done to Israel. They're very insightful, and, and you'd certainly be a, get a blessing from it. Um, it says the Vatican's, P it goes on to say that the Vatican PLO agreements has, uh, have been signed to enable the, uh, the eviction of the Jews from Jerusalem. This follows a memorandum signed by Palestinian Vatican officials in 2000, which repeatedly the Vatican calls for an international mandate to preserve the, pro uh, the proper identity of sacred character of Jerusalem. It means a return to a time when half of Israel's capital was under Islamic control. The old city was closed to the Jews, the synagogues were desecrated, and the walls barred barbed wire and snipers divided the city by force. Now, we have shared with you here on Israeli News Live, continually, I will continually share this. This should be the head front of every news source in the world. I encourage you, share this news broadcast. You are viewing the pictures even now, right here on our stream here on YouTube. You're seeing the photos of the checkpoint that is being built. It is the infrastructure. This is on Highway 1, coming from Ben Gurion Airport from Tel Aviv area, the main highway coming into Jerusalem there, the checkpoint is being built. Why is there a checkpoint on Highway 1 coming into Jerusalem if they're not planning to internationalize the city? As we have said, there is already an agreement that is in place. Rome has signed an agreement with 
Israel. Israel's just not coming out and admitting it. And in fact, the deplorable part about this all is the fact that the Israeli government is not making any big uproar about this in the first place. Why isn't Prime Minister Netanyahu gone out publicly and condemned the Palestinian Authority and, and the Vatican for the evils that they are doing to the Jewish people? Why is there so much silence? All we get is a, a little soft little thing that comes up and says they're angry about it. Well, nobody sees they're angry about it. Nobody seems to care what's happening to the Jewish people. And my Israeli brothers and sisters, you will be pushed back to the coast of Israel and to a little eight mile stretch. What is it? They're bringing us what to the homeland for what? To annihilate us? You know, the only way God is going to change this picture is for himself to step in, which he will. And this is what Hashem intends to do. He said he would send Eliyahu, Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Hanavi, to be able to set this situation straight. Even in the Christian writings, the, 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 the believed that Mashiach was Yeshua. Yeshua himself said that, he, that Eliyahu would come first and restore all things. And so it's going to happen. Rashi, the great Jewish Torah commentator, said that the sages believed that Moshe, Moses himself, would return during the Messianic age. And we see it clearly because it says in uh, uh, Exodus uh, 15, See, I will sing unto the Lord that he's gotten victory over the horse and his rider. Not 600 horses and rider, but the Pope of Rome that's trying to ride in on his horse. Even according to Zechariah's prophecy, according to the prophecy of the Christian Bible as well that speaks about the Antichrist riding in on his horse. That's that white horse rider. But he's coming in this time on a red horse, no doubt, with his bloodthirsty regime to try to wipe out the Jewish people. God will reign raise up a standard that two anointed ones of Zechariah's prophecy that will stand up against this evil, ungodly regime. And we have scriptural proof that the two anointed ones in Zechariah are Moshe Eliyahu, because Malachi as well as Moshe said he would be back. And my Jewish brethren, I know it's supposed to be a news broadcast, but my heart is on fire. We know for a fact that according to, to Exodus chapter 34, that Moshe was going to do wonders, not just miracles, but wonders like he had never done before. He will come back. He will do wonders. And when he does, we will be delivered from the Romans. 2,000 years ago, we wanted to be delivered from them, and it didn't happen. But we will be delivered from the Romans because that's who our enemy is. And this is what every Jew in Israel must recognize. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Aval. אני יודע, וגם כל ישראל יודעים, אין שלום בישראל.